Okay, welcome everyone to Basic Collision Detection in Python with Tokyo EdTech, that is me. In this video, I'm gonna go over four methods of collision detection, I'll talk about how they work, and I'm gonna show you some code that actually implements that, except for the last one, because I don't know how to do that one using the turtle module. So let's take a look at what we have here today. Our first method is called overlapping coordinates. So basically, this is a very simple one. This is where we compare the x and y coordinate of one object with the x and y coordinate of another object. If they are exactly the same, then we say that there is a collision. This works really well for grid-based games or tile-based games where every object moves exactly on the tiles. But for games where it doesn't move exactly on a tile or exactly on a grid, it doesn't work at all. And you'll see some examples later. Okay, the second method is distance checking. This is where we measure the distance from the middle or from the xy coordinate of one object to the xy coordinate, the middle of the other object, and we calculate the distance. We use the Pythagorean theorem. So the square root of a squared plus b squared. Um, so a little geometry there. And if that distance is less than half of the width of this object, plus half of the width of this object, then you have a collision. Now this only works if each object is square or round or very, very close to that. Otherwise it doesn't work very well. The third method is called an axis aligned bounding box. And in this method, uh, we draw an imaginary box around each object. And what that does is we, well, what we do then is we compare the corners, I guess, basically, or the, the sides of each box with the sides of the other box. So if one of these coordinates is between the top and bottom and between the left and right, then we know we have a collision. This is a very fast way of checking. And what it lets us do is it lets us deal with objects that are different sizes. So if we were doing the you know, overlapping method, this would only register a collision when the ball was exactly here. Or if we were doing the distance checking method, you know, if it was here, the, it would be really close here, but not close here. So you can see there's different distances to the collisions. And then the last one is called pixel perfect collision checking. And what that does is it actually checks every single dot, every single pixel in the image against every single pixel in the other image. So this takes a lot of processing power because it, there's a lot to check. Um, but you can see here, it's more accurate than say the axis aligned bounding box because you can see here, this would be a collision if you're using AABB, axis aligned bounding box collisions. Because you can see here, there's an overlap of these boxes. Now, but you can also see that they're not actually touching. So depending on the speed of your game and how close or how big the objects are, this might be really noticeable or it might not be noticeable. Okay, so let's take a look at some code to do at least the first three. And before I get to that, let me give a big shout out to my very first three 16-bit members of my channel. Um, Kevin was first, Paul was second, and joining them is Jan. Thank you so much. So if you're interested in supporting the channel more directly, please consider joining and becoming a member down below. So what I have here, is a very simple program that has some images and it has three different methods of determining a collision. You can see we've got the overlapping collision. And this is where, again, we take the X coordinate of one object, compare it to the X coordinate of the other. And if that's the same, and the Y coordinate of one object is the same as the Y coordinate of the other object, we return true because this tells us we have a collision. Otherwise we return false. The distance method, as I mentioned earlier, is where we take the square of the difference in x plus the square of the distance difference in distance in y, and then we take the square root. So this is, again, the Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Take the square root of each side. I won't bore you with the math, but that's basically how it works. And then how I did it here is if that distance is less than the width of one plus the width of the other, divided by two, that's half of each width, that tells us that they are, they have, they have collided. And then the last one is axis aligned bounding box. Now I'll be perfectly honest, I don't quite understand this math. Uh, 
Um, I found this on Stack Overflow. I'll see if I can find the link again and, and put that down below, but if not, search Stack Overflow. And basically, you're checking for an X collision, and you're using the math module. So you subtract, multiply by two, do the absolute value, check is that less than the, the width of the two objects, and then you do the same thing with the Y. Again, I don't quite understand it, kind of get it, but don't quite understand it. And then you return X collision and Y collision. So if X collision is true and Y collision is true, then you have a full collision. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool actually. Uh, so yeah, that's AABB collision. So I've got a little, I got some code here that's gonna test that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the overlapping collision first for all three. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so you can see here, I've got a wizard and a goblin. I've got a Pac-Man and a cherry. And I've got a ball and a paddle. I just called it a bar in my code. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the goblin to the left. Okay, and now the, this was at 128, negative 128. And the goblin is moving minus 64 pixels each time. So what will happen is it will exactly overlap at some point. But you can see here, the goblin is touching the wizard, but there's no collision registered. I'm gonna go one more, and you can see there, that is a full collision, because the center XY is the same as the center XY of both. So the goblin and the wizard. So you can see how that collision wasn't quite accurate, but if you're moving on a grid, or if you're moving on a, some kind of map with tiles, this works really, really well, and it's a very fast way of checking for collisions. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the Pac-Man, okay? And we'll see here, okay, now right now Pac-Man's touching, but the collision has not registered. And you can see here, it actually goes right through, because at no point does the center coordinate exactly equal the center coordinate of this. And I think you're gonna see the same thing down here with the ball. Ball moves, and it's very close to the center, but not quite, and it goes right through. So the overlapping coordinate method only works really well if you are on a grid system where everything moves the exact same number of pixels. So it's useful in certain situations, but not in others. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this to distance collision. And actually, let's go ahead and just copy that. Okay, so now I'm gonna do all three again with the distance collision. And so let's try the goblin again. So we're gonna be measuring the distance. Now this one's not gonna to be too bad, I think. So you can see how the collision happened even though the goblin is not very, you know, on the center on top of the, the wizard. Let's do the same thing with Pac-Man. Okay, and you see that worked pretty well as well. So it's not too, too bad. Now let's take a look here at the ball. Now this one is where we're gonna see that it's not gonna work so well. And the reason is that the width of this paddle is much wider than it is tall. So watch this, okay? So even though the ball was here, I still registered a collision uh, because I was using the width as my measurement, okay? So, but you know, you just kind of intuitively see if the ball is over here, the distance to the center is much greater than the distance to the center here. So there's no consistent distance that we can use to find a collision with something that is this different in dimensions. Okay. And for the last one, we'll do the AABB, the Axis Aligned Bounding Box. Um, AABB. And let's run it. Okay, so again, this is AABB, and let's watch that. And that one works pretty well. Uh, for these objects. And again, these are objects that are roughly the same size. Okay, you see it didn't, Pac-Man didn't trigger the collision. And there we go, so that works pretty well as well. And now let's look at our last case. And now what's really cool is see how it doesn't register the collision here. It's really, really accurate. And then as soon as I move down a little bit more, it did register that collision. So the axis aligned bounding box is a really good method that works with almost any size object. Uh, so it's probably the best one of, of the ones that we've used here. But you know, you can make a choice depending on 
you know, how your program works and the size and shape of your objects. Um, again, I didn't do the, the fourth method, which was, uh, you know, pixel perfect, just because the coding is really difficult for that. And actually the turtle module doesn't give you the tools you need to do that. So I'm sorry about that. And I can't, I can't actually do it. There, it doesn't, as far as I know, there's no way to do it with just the turtle module. Um, just, you know, some things, you know, you might want to take a look at, you might want to play around with moving the goblin at a different speed or moving the Pac-Man at a different speed. And you can kind of see where each different method uh, has its strengths and its weaknesses. So, uh, you know, the, the, the less this is, if this was like one, now it would take forever to get across the screen, but you can probably see a little bit better the weaknesses and strengths of some of those different methods for each size type of image. So the dimensions are really important in the relative dimensions. So that is that. Um, so just going back through this, we went through basic collision detection. We talked about overlapping coordinates where the X and Y are exactly equal. Distance checking, where we measure the distance between the center using the Pythagorean theorem. The axis aligned bounding box, which is probably the best one to use. That's at least pretty fast. And then we had we talked about pixel perfect collision checking. And you can see again here, it's a little bit of its weakness uh, for round objects and square objects, especially, or two round objects. But overall, it works pretty well. Um, and you can even like make this a little bit smaller to make the, the collisions a little bit better uh, for your game. So yeah, that was yeah, kind of a quick introduction. Um, there'll be a link to the code down below so you can kind of play around with this and just kind of get an idea of how these different methods work. So again, thanks to Kevin, Paul, and Jan. Everybody else, uh, keep on coding. Have a great day.